So, welcome everybody to this new session of the Senior Seminar Course. Today, we are very pleased to have with us uh, Professor Alexander Idesman. Uh, Dr. Idesman is a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Texas Tech University. His research interests include the development of higher order accurate numerical techniques for different MES, including wave and head equations, electrodynamics at low frequency and impact loadings, helmets, photon, and electric equations, and also the application of numerical techniques to engineering products. Dr. Idesman has authored and co authored more than 100 journal and conference papers, and today is going to present us optimal local truncation error methods for solution of PDEs on irregular domains and interfaces with optimal accuracy and unfitted calculation methods. Uh, Dr. Idesman, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you, Ignacia, for introduction. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Anyate for giving, me, for giving me opportunity to present my results at this seminar. And I will talk today about optimal local truncation error method for solution of partial differential equations on regular domain and interfaces with optimal accuracy and unfitted Cartesian meshes. At the moment. And after short introduction, I will show a short derivation of the new approach for the uh, Poisson equation based on uh, the minimization of the local truncation error. Then I will summarize the main features and advantages of the new approach. I will show next, I will show the solution of uh, the 2D and 3D test problems by the new approach and compare the results with finite elements and conclusions. Uh, the goals of this uh, of, uh, in the development of the new technique is uh, the extraction of the maximum possible accuracy of a numerical method from a given structure of discrete equations. Another goal is uh, a significant increase in accuracy and the reduction in computation time by a factor of 1,000 and more for the numerical solution of real-world problems compared to those for existing numerical techniques. Also, one of the goals is the reduction of user time for the preparation of input data by the use of trivial unfitted Cartesian meshes for regular geometry. So uh, without uh, the need of complicated mesh generators, especially for 3D problems. And methodology that I will use is based on uh, the direct calculations of the coefficients of stencil equations by uh, the minimization of the order of the local truncation error of stencil equations. And I will explain this in a few uh, minutes. Motivation and possible application of this approach. For example, rapid, rapid design with simple unfitted meshes. For example, if we have here an example of an engine, if we have a very complex geometry, then uh, the use of unfitted Cartesian meshes significantly simplify uh, the solution of the problem. Another maybe application, correct propagation with, when we use stationary unfitted meshes. So in our approach, meshes are totally independent of geometry. So we can use stationary meshes for propagating or evolving geometry. And also as uh, application, we can also consider multi-scale modeling without scale separation, homogeneous and heterogeneous materials. Because the technique that I will uh, present is uh, very accurate. So currently, this new technique is applied to the following partial differential equations. This scale of wave equation and heat equations that also can be written in this universal form. We here uh, first time derivative corresponds to the heat equations and the second time derivative corresponds to the wave equation. Then time independent 
scale of partial differential equation. For example, Poisson equation and Helmgold's equations. And system of partial differential equations. Here also I apply to 2D time independent and independent elasticity equations. Next, I shortly present the idea of the new approach. So here assume that we have uh, irregular geometry, for example, a trapezoidal plate with two holes. And independently of this geometry, we introduce Cartesian mesh. Then at each internal point, here black points of the domain, after space discretization, we assume some stencil equation or discrete equations that, for example, for the scale of wave heat equation can be written in this form. Where here ui and here time derivative of ui as a numerical solution for unknown functions and time derivatives. mi, ki are just some unknown stencil coefficients. H is the mesh size. L is the number of points included into the small compact stencils. For example, uh, many problems or many numerical techniques, uh, such as finite elements, finite volume, finite difference, mesh method, can be written in this form, where the stencil coefficients mi and ki can be found using some weak formulations. In the approach that I suggest, these coefficients are unknown and will be found. Another feature of this technique, there are no stencil equation or discrete equation for the boundary and interface points. And also there are no unknowns at the boundary and interface points. All regular unknowns are given at the internal Cartesian grid points. So here, black points. Then, for cut stencils located close to the boundary or interfaces, the exact boundary and interface conditions at a small number of boundary and interface points are added to the local truncation error as constraints. And I will explain this a little bit later. Then finally, the unknown stencil coefficients will be calculated by the minimization of the local truncation error. At these derivations, the entire partial differential equation or a system of partial differential equations will be used. And this provides the optimal accuracy for a given structure of a discrete system. And finally, when we have all stencil equations with calculated stencil coefficients, as usual for all existing technique, we solve a system of stencil equations for all internal grid points. Some examples of the compact stencils in the two-dimensional case. This is regular stencils located far from the body or, uh, and interfaces. For example, here, three by three stencils with nine points or five by five stencils with 25 grid points. They, these stencils are similar to uh, those for linear and quadratic finite elements. And for example, uh, the wave and heat equations and Poisson equations with L number of points, grid points can be written in this form. Where for example, L, the number of points included in the stencils equals nine and 27 in two and three dimensional case for linear elements and 25, five by five and 125 uh, for quadratic elements in the 2D case and in the 3D case. And now I will shortly explain the derivation of the new approach uh, with 27 point stencils that corresponds to linear finite elements for the 3D Poisson equations with uh, the directly the Neumann boundary conditions for cut stencils. So I assume that we have here, I show here, I hope that yeah, you can see this, Poisson equation with the 
Dirichlet here and Neumann boundary conditions. Now we can consider 27 point cells with the stencil equation for the central point, point 14. I use here the local numeration. And assume that the boundary uh, can cut this 27 point cell. Then the stencil equations for Poisson equation can be written as just a, uh, just a, a discrete equation where L is the number of internal grid points. So L is smaller than 27 if we consider cut stencils. Then for this stencil equation, stencil equation is a typical discrete equation of discrete system. Then for this stencil equation, we introduce the local truncation error by the dis dis replacement of the numerical solution by exact solution at the grid points. Due to the difference between exact and numerical solution, we have residual E. And this residual we call the local truncation error of the stencil equation, this equation two. To understand the significance of the local truncation error. Let's deduct equation one from equation two. In this case, we can see that uh, the local truncation error is a linear combination of the absolute error at the grid points with unknown stencil coefficients Ki. Then we will use this unknown coefficients Ki in order to minimize uh, the local truncation error. Then, if we have cut stencils, uh, cut by the boundary, then also to the expression for the local truncation error, we will add the Dirichlet boundary conditions and the Neumann boundary conditions with some Lagrange multipliers QI and Q1I and Q2I. Because uh, this uh, expression in boxes I zero, uh, these uh, boundary conditions at a small number of grid points, I introduce at a small number of grid points, M1 for Dirichlet boundary conditions and M2 number of grid points for the normal boundary conditions. So then, because due to zero for uh, this expression in boxes, this is, uh, the boundary conditions uh, do not change the value of the local truncation error. And uh, also I will use a small number of grid points. So then uh, analysis shows that we can use total L plus M1 plus M2. So the total number of internal and the boundary points equals 27 for 27 point stencils. As for the regular stencils uh, with, uh, located far from the boundary. And also a few words about the location of the boundary points. We can use a very simple location of the boundary points. For example, we can join the central points 14 with the grid points located outside the domain or cut by the boundary. So then we have horizontal, vertical, and uh, diagonal grid lines. And the intersection of these lines with the boundary uh, uh, give, gives us the location of the uh, boundary points. <coughs> okay, so then when we have this expression of the local location R4, then we will use uh, stencil coefficient Ki and here Lagrange multipliers Q1 and Q2 in order to minimize this <coughs> local truncation error. But in order to do this, we will first expand the local application error into a Taylor series. In order to do this, uh, we will expand into a Taylor series the exact solution at the grid points and the boundary points in the Taylor series in the vicinity of the central grid points 14. Here equation five. And then for the central point 14, uh, we will use uh, the original partial differential equation or here Poisson equation and we will express the second time derivatives with respect to x in terms of y and z derivatives 
And also, if we here uh, differentiate the left and the right hand sides of these equations with respect to x, y, and z, also we have additional relationship between the mixed derivatives. Next, if we substitute equation five and six for the exact solutions into expression for the local truncation error that also include uh, the exact solution at the grid and boundary points. Then we will have uh, the expansion of the local truncation error into a Taylor series. We here H is uh, the mesh size. Then due to the use of partial differential equation or Poisson equation, this Taylor series expansion uh, <coughs> does not include uh, the partial derivatives with uh, respect to x square, x cube, and higher orders of x. Then, in order to minimize, yeah, and here b coefficients are just a linear combination of stencil coefficients kp and the Lagrange multipliers q1 and q2. Then, in order to minimize this local invocation error, we will uh, zero uh, the first 16 coefficients bi that corresponds to the zero first second and third order with respect to h in the local invocation error. And then we will minimize the coefficients bi for the fourth, fifth, and the sixth order with respect to the mesh size h. So, and we will use for this the least square method. So finally, using this least square method, we will get 43 linear algebraic equations for finding stencil coefficients kp as well as Lagrange multipliers. So then solving the system numerically, we can find stencil coefficients and then we can solve the problem. Here, for example, similar as for the Poisson equation, we can derive the stencil coefficients, for example, for elastodynamics when we have time derivatives. In this case, we use similar procedure for the derivation only when we expand the log truncation error into a Taylor series, we replace time derivatives at the central point of the stencils by the special derivatives using a partial differential equation of elasticity for displacement u and for displacement v. And now I will uh, just summarize some improvements of the order of accuracy of the new approach, I call it all 10, compared to finite and isogeometric elements. For example, for time-dependent wave and heat equations with nine-point stencils, similar to uh, the stencils for linear finite elements. So for linear finite elements, the order of accuracy is two, for the new approach, four, increased by two orders. For 25 point stencils, similar to quadratic elements. For isogeometric elements on a regular domain, the order of accuracy is four. For new approach eight, increased by four orders. For example, for Poisson equation, for quadratic elements on square meshes, on a regular domains, the order of accuracy is six for isogeometric elements, 18. The order of accuracy is 18 for quadratic elements. For on regular domains, so increased by 12 orders. For example, for time independent elasticity equations, for quadratic elements, for isogeometric elements, order of accuracy is four, for the new approach 10, increased by six orders. And these results are reported in these papers. Next, also, I would like to show very shortly the derivation of the new approach with 27 point stencil, again for Poisson equation, but with discontinuous coefficients for heterogeneous materials. Uh, so in this case, Poisson equation here, uh, coefficients uh, AL are discontinuous. For different subdomains, we have different coefficients. Then at the interfaces, 
between different subdomains, we have interface conditions, for example, continuity of function and continuity of um, fluxes. Then, 27 uh, point stencils for heterogeneous materials, we use this stencil equation one, also with 27 unknown coefficients Kp. We, for heterogeneous material, now we have two unknown functions. For one material, I use uh, one here star uh, notations and another material, double star. And here AP are just indicators. It's zero for one material, star or one for another material, double star. Then, in order to derive the stencil coefficients for heterogeneous materials, also we introduce the local notation error by the displacements of numerical solution by the exact solution. And also similar to <coughs> the cut stencils, here, if interface uh, cut the 27-point cell into two uh, uh, subdomains with different properties, then also for this stencil, we add, uh, we add the interface conditions at a small number of interface points. Here, condition first condition for the function, and second, this is condition for the fluxes with some Lagrange multipliers. Then, in order to minimize this uh, local location error, we use very similar approach. First, we uh, expand this local location error into a Taylor series. Uh, and for this, we expand into a Taylor series function at the regular grid point and the bar and the interface points in the internal series with respect to the central grid point here 14 and also for 14 we use the Poisson equation express the x derivative with respect to the y derivatives the same for the mix here derivatives and finally similar to the previous derivation uh, our local location error doesn't include uh, the second and high order deriv derivatives with respect to x. And then again, similarly using the least square method, we minimize the local location error and we can find from the system here 109 linear algebraic equation, we can find unknown stencil coefficients kp and as well as the Lagrange multipliers. And similar approach we can use for time dependent problems. In this case, Stencil coefficients also include some time derivatives of the function at the grid points. And also for the local location error, we add the interface condition at a small number of interface points using Lagrange multipliers. Then again, the summary of the improvement of the order of accuracy by the new approach, all term. Uh, for heterogeneous materials with regular interfaces compared to finite elements on conform meshes. For the new approach, we use unfitted Cartesian meshes. <coughs> for example, for time-dependent wave and heat equations with nine-point stencils, <coughs> for finite elements, the order of accuracy is two, for the new approach, three, increased by one order without additional computational cost. For Poisson equations with regular interfaces, for quadratic elements, for finite elements, order of accuracy is 3, for the new approach, 11, increased by eight orders. For example, for time depend independent elasticity equations, for quadratic elements with 25 point stencils, for finite elements, order of accuracy is 3, for the new approach, 10, increased by seven orders. And, uh, the, these results are described in these papers. Also, I would like to mention that one of the important part of the numerical technique is the calculation of the space derivatives of the unknown function. For example, uh, stresses in terms of displacements. And also, we suggest 
a new post-processing procedure that is very similar to uh, the calculation using compact uh, stencils in basic computations. For example, I will explain this for 27 uh, point stencils for the uh, 3D Poisson equation for heterogeneous materials. For example, in basic computation, we use these simple stencils. <coughs> then, in order to calculate the space derivative, for example, du dx at the central point, we will uh, add to the stencil equation just this special derivative. And then, for this new stencil equation, again, using similar approach, using partial differential equation, using the local denotation error, we can find new stencil coefficients kp and then calculate uh, calculate the special derivative. And some, some features of this new post-processing. So for post-processing, we saw a small local system of algebraic equations. We use the partial differential equation for post-processing. And this significantly increase the accuracy of the special derivatives. For example, for quadratic elements, for example, for uh, here 25 point stencil in the two dimensional case, we can get the increase by six order for special derivatives compared to post-processing without the use of partial differential equations. And these results are reported in these papers. Okay, then I will skip this. Now I would like just to summarize the main features and advantages of the new approach. So all term does not use any weak formulation for the derivation of discrete equations. The structure of discrete equations after space discretization is assumed and the coefficient of discrete system are directly derived by the minimization of the order of the local truncation error. This provides the optimal uh, order of accuracy at the given width of stencil equations. It cannot be improved without increasing the width of stencil equations. Therefore, independent of weak formulations, continuous or discontinuous Galerkin or other uh, weak formulations used by known techniques for the derivation of discrete equations, the accuracy of discrete equations of the new approach is higher than that for known approaches. Next, at the same computational cost, the same width of stencil equations, or the same width of discrete equations, all term yields a much higher order of accuracy than other numerical techniques, like finite elements, finite difference, finite volume, isotomatic elements, meshless method, and other techniques. This also means that at a given accuracy, all time significantly reduces the computation time compared to known numerical techniques by a factor of a thousand and millions and more. In contrast to finite elements, spectral elements, and geometric elements, and other similar techniques used for regular domains with conform meshes, all time uses trivial and finite Cartesian meshes that requires practically practically negligible computation time for their preparation. In contrast to finite elements, small distances between grid and boundary or interface points, cut cells, does not lead to the degradation of accuracy for the new approach. This is a very important advantage of all term. And also all term does not require time consuming numerical integration for finding the coefficient of the stencil or discrete equations. For example, as for high order finite elements, spectral elements, and geometric elements. For all term, the coefficient of stencil equation for the grid points located far from the boundary or interfaces are calculated analytically. For the grid points located close to the boundary or interfaces with cut, uh, cut stencils, the coefficients of stencil equations are calculated numerically by solution of small local system of linear algebraic equations, as I mentioned before, 
for Poisson equations. And now I will show you some uh, numerical results obtained by the application of the new approach on a regular geometry. So first, uh, I would like to show here uh, all term applied to the scalar wave equations for high frequency waves. So we use a method of manufacturing solution with this exact solution. And we solve uh, this problem for the scalar wave equation for this irregular domain. So we solve this problem with nine point stencils similar to linear elements and also solved by linear finite elements. And here I summarize the results. As the average of 30%, new approach reduces the number of degrees of freedom by approximately 60 times. As the average of 15%, the new approach reduces the number of degrees of freedom by 80 times for this problem. For engineering accuracy of 1.5%, new approach uh, decreases the number of degrees of freedom uh, approximately uh, by 300 times. And these results are reported in this paper. Another application, again, to the uh, scalar wave equation, but in the three-dimensional case. Let's consider a trapezoidal prism with a spherical hole. So for the new approach, we use unfitted Cartesian meshes. And for comparison, also we solve the same problem using finite elements with conform tetrahedral meshes using commercial code console. So again, we use the method of manufacturing solution here for uh, <coughs> the function and uh, the first time derivative of this function, u and v. So we solve this problem uh, using 27 point stencils similar to linear finite elements and plot uh, the error, relative error for displacement and velocities versus the number of degrees of freedom. <coughs> curves one corresponds to the new approach and curves from one to eight corresponds to the linear and high order up to the seventh order finite elements. As can be seen, a new approach with linear, finite ele with linear elements yields much more accurate results at the same number of degrees of freedom then high order finite elements with much wider stencil equation is much greater computation time. And also at the accuracy of 5%, this dash line for these plots. We can find the, the new approach reduces the number of degrees of freedom by a thousand times compared to linear finite elements at similar stencil equations. Also, these slides show the numerical stability of the new approach. So we solve the same problems as I uh, showed on the previous slide. And we solve this problem on uh, thousand, 2,000 meshes, so unfitted meshes, with very small variation of the mesh size from 1 over 10 to 1 over 30, we use 2,000 meshes. And we plot the relative error versus the mesh size. And for all these meshes, three grid planes, x, y, x, y, and z equals zero, coincides with the faces of uh, cubic domain. In this case, when we change the mesh size very gradually, we have very different locations of the grid, Cartesian grid points with respect to the irregular boundary. But as we can see here, we have convergent stable results for these 2,000 meshes. So here we use 2,000 meshes to plot this curve. And similar result here, stability for Helmholtz equations. Also, we have stable results. Also, we <coughs> applied our approach to problems with discontinuous solutions. So here we considered, for example, 1D impact problem with moving discontinuity. Uh, for this problem, we consider one-dimensional bar, the scalar wave equation, or one dimensional equation. At the left uh, end, we instantaneously apply velocity. And for this problem, for the velocity at some time here 0.5, uh, 
we plot the velocity along the bar and for the exact solution we have piecewise constant solution and for the numerical solution by the new approach this is black cap and for linear finite elements red cap we have oscillatory results but if we uh, filter spurious oscillations then we have these results as we can see uh, new approach yields much more accurate results than finite elements here uh, curve three is the exact solution another example here we apply uh, our approach to an isotropic heat equation with variable coefficients so here this equation we use the method of manufacturing solution with this exact solution for this exact solution we have this uh, uh, coefficients a x a y for this equation and we solve this on a regular domain so we solve this problem using the new approach and finite elements and plotted uh, the relative error as a function of the number of degrees of freedom for the new approach curve one and for linear quadratic and cubic elements triangle and quadrilateral so as we can see the new approach with linear elements yield much more accurate results uh, on unfitted meshes than cubic finite elements on conform meshes and with much wide much wider stencils and much greater computation time and for yeah as this is for this problem we used here unfitted mesh for the new approach shown here and we use conform meshes for finite elements using uh, console now some examples for heterogeneous materials with regular interfaces first Poisson equation <coughs> so we, here we consider a cubic domain with a spherical inclusion so for the new approach again we use <coughs> unfitted cartesian meshes and we use conform tetrahedral meshes for finite elements so we solve this problem for heterogeneous materials and Poisson equation with this exact solution using the method of manufacturing solution and here we plot the relative error as a function of the number of degrees of freedom for the new approach with linear elements this is curve one and the solution by linear and high order finite elements up to the seventh order for yeah for finite elements so we can see here that the new approach at the same number of degrees of freedom the new approach yields much more accurate results than high order finite elements with much wider stencils and also at accuracy 0.1 percent we can reduce the number of degrees of freedom by uh, 3500 times compared to linear finite elements uh, this slide i would like to show uh, compare the special derivatives for the previous problem i plot the special derivatives uh, sorry the relative error for the special derivatives versus the number of degrees of freedom and here we use the new approach for basic computations and the new approach for post-processing also using all term so then curve one corresponds to the new approach and these curves from two to eight corresponds to linear and high order finite elements up to order eight so here as we can see also at the engineering accuracy 0.1 percent and by the way sorry i forgot here to mention here we plot the error in the infinity norm and the l2 norm and if you compare the accuracy for linear elements for the new approach and for the linear finite elements at accuracy 0.1 percent then we can find that we can reduce the number of degrees of freedom by more than a million times this will lead to a huge reduction in the computation time for this problem. Also, I would like to measure that we use unfitted Cartesian meshes. This uh, slide shows the uh, numerical stability. Also, here we slightly change the mesh size and using thousand meshes just to get very different locations 
of the grid points with respect to the uh, interface. And we have, we plot here error versus the mesh size, here 4,000 meshes, and we have convergent stable results for very different locations of the weak points with respect to interface. Here infinity norm, here L2 norm. This problem, uh, now two-dimensional problem, but with quadratic elements, with 25-point stencils for the Poisson equation with elliptical interface. Again, we use unfitted meshes and compare with finite elements using conformed meshes. Here we plotted relative error in the infinity norm and the L2 norm versus the number of degrees of freedom for the new approach, K1 and for the order finite elements up to the seventh order. As we can see here, uh, the new approach provides the 11th order of accuracy with quadratic elements and is much more accurate than uh, high order finite elements with much uh, wider stencils. Now time dependent elasticity equations. Again, let's consider the problem for a plate with a uh, elliptical interface or elliptical inclusion. So again, we use a method manufactured solution. And here, for example, I will show the results for stresses. So we solve the problem uh, using new approach and plot the normal stress here and the shear stress, sigma x and uh, tau xy in the infinity norm and L2 norm relative error versus the number degrees of freedom. So we saw new approach cap one and linear and high order up to the fifth order finite element, this five caps. So then for the new approach with quadratic elements, 25 point stencils, we get for this problem, we get tens order of accuracy for stresses as well at accuracy of 0.1%, we can reduce the number of degrees of freedom compared to quadratic finite elements by 60 times for stresses. And also here, the stability, we saw problem on 1,000 meshes with very different locations of the grid points with respect to the interface, and we have conversion results. Here, error in the infinity norm, relative error in the L2 norm, 1,000 meshes. And finally, time independent, time, sorry, time dependent, it was a dynamics problems. <coughs> a problem for a plate with a, a circular interface, or circular inclusion. We use a method of manufacturing solution with this exact solution. And also here we plot, for example, the normal stress sigma x and shear stress, uh, versus the number of degrees of freedom for the new approach, cap one and seven, and I will explain. Uh, and for linear and high order finite elements up to the fifth order. <coughs> so we solve this problem using uh, the diagonal mathematics, cap seven, and non diagonal mathematics, uh, cap one for the new approach. Then at accuracy of 0.1%, we can reduce the number of degrees of freedom by uh, 10,000 times with non diagonal mathematics and 3,000 times with the diagonal mathematics compared to linear finite elements. So, here for the new approach, also we use linear elements. And also for the stresses, as I mentioned, we use new post processing procedure. Now I would like to, uh, to, uh, to mention uh, uh, about some other application of the new approach, all term. First application, rigorous calculation of the diagonal mathematics for time-dependent PDEs without any assumptions. For example, diagonal mathematics is calculated in terms of the 
elements of the stiffness matrix. And this calculation is based on the minimization of the order of the local truncation error. Some other applications, numerical high order boundary conditions for cut stencils when we use high order methods. And I will, uh, I will show uh, some, uh, I will mention about this on the next slide. Then another application, calculation of the special derivatives of numerical solution at post-processing using pa original partial differential equations, for example, for stress calculations. Also, I would like to mention that this new post-processing pre uh, procedure can be independently used with any method, for example, with finite elements. For example, we can solve a problem using finite element and then calculate stresses using the new post-processing procedure with the use of partial differential equation. And this significantly increases the accuracy of the special derivatives. And also we can use new procedure for the calculation of numerical solution at any point of the domain, again, using partial differential equations. <coughs> About uh, high order numerical boundary conditions. It seems that we have, for example, regular 25 point stencils and here the horizontal boundary for example cut five stencils so now we have cut stencils and this cut stencil we cannot get very high accuracy however with the new approach with all term even we can use as for this uh, central point this central point even we can use a small nine point stencils but we can get uh, with nine point stencils and the use of the boundary conditions and original partial differential equation, we can get the order of accuracy of the original 25 point stencils. And uh, some of these results are reported in this paper. So I will skip the conclusions. Then uh, some results on the new approach are published in these papers. And then future research. So then for the future research, I plan to develop H and P refinement similar to finite elements based on quadris uh, and octris meshes uh, for the new approach. Then also I plan to develop the new approach for other PDEs. So, so far I have applied the new approach to linear PDEs and also I plan to extend it to nonlinear PDEs. And also I'm interested also in development of preconditions for the solution of this uh, equation obtained by the new approach. For example, currently for some PDEs I use uh, iterative solver in MATLAB, GMRES without precondition, but in any case, precondition maybe can help and can uh, get, accelerate the solution. Also, I would like to mention that I am interested in <coughs> collaboration and joint, joint proposals because this is a virtual seminar. So then if you would like to talk to me to discuss, if you have questions, also you can ask me questions right now, or you can just send me email and I will schedule um, a Zoom meeting and then we can talk uh, like and discuss this personally. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lesman, for the presentation and for keeping uh, time fit. Uh, we have time for maybe a couple of short questions if anybody wants to ask. Well, I have a couple. Um, uh, you talk about a uh, local system of algebraic equations that uh, you solve in order to obtain the uh, stencil coefficients for points that are close to the boundaries. Um, what, is the, what is the computational cost of this solution of local system of algebraic equations compared to the solution of the whole problem? <coughs> okay, for example, just a moment. Uh, because I showed the derivation, for example, here at the moment. Okay, for example, for 27 point stencils, 
we have, for example, 27 or less than 27 uh, stencil coefficients Kp. For regular, we have 27. Regular stencil for cut stencil, we have less than. But we should solve this small system 43 linear algebraic equations. And also, I would like to mention that for each grid point, all this uh, local system can be uh, solved independently. So on parallel computers can be solved totally independently. And then this cost of this solution, we use MATLAB. It, 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 it even cannot be compared with solution of the global system because it's very fast. Million hundred times faster than the solution of the global system because it's a very small system of linear algebraic equations. Thank you. Then uh, you showed a, a 1D impact problem where you showed some results with oscillations and some with non -oscill without oscillations. And you said that you filtered uh, those oscillations. Did you use a damping or how did you filter them? Just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this problem. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so here I didn't mention the filtering procedure. So this is my old results. So, so usually when you solve problems with or uh, wave propagation problems with high frequencies, due to the dispersion error, you always have spurious oscillation in the numerical solutions. And then the problem is how to uh, quantify this spurious oscillation. And then you can quantify, you can filter using some filters. So uh, in my previous publication, also I have results on quantification and filtering of spurious oscillations. Just I use my previous results in order to filter spurious oscillations. I use uh, some technique for us to quantify spurious oscillations and then using, also I call it post-processing, I use a time integration method separately for post-processing in order to remove spurious oscillations. But I don't integrate in time. I use five positive and five negative time increments, so the time is the same finally. But I can filter spurious oscillations. So I do not mention this because it's my previous results, maybe uh, 15 years ago I received these results. But if we filter spurious oscillations, then we can compare the results. And here we can see that the new approach much more accurate than the finite elements. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments, Ricardo? I, I am a bit lost about the order of convergence. If you want to consider um, a conforming mesh, even for the for your solution, let's say, so the domain in which it is possible, then what would be the order of convergence of your stencil procedure without cuts, let's say? Just a moment. Okay, maybe I will show this table. So here, oh, here's the table for, uh, for example, for interfaces. <clears throat> for example, for interfaces, yeah, and th this is the basic idea. So the basic idea of the new approach, if we have a discrete system, then how to extract the maximum accuracy for this structure of the discrete system? And I <coughs> do this. Uh, so <coughs> this derivation is based how to extract this, based on the local truncation error and the use of partial differential equations. And for example, yeah, even with irregular interfaces, for example, for time independent elasticity, for 25 point stencil, we can get the tenth order of accuracy with unfitted meshes. For finite elements, for conform meshes, it's clear, it's known that order of accuracy of quadratic elements is three. And here for the derivation, for each step, for example, for 2D elasticity and for 3D elasticity, we have a system of partial differential equations. Then for the derivation of each stencils, I use all partial differential equations, not just one partial differential equations. For example, for elasticity, I have 
two equations for displacement u and for displacement v. Then for just one stencil, I use both equations to find, okay, to find stencil coefficients. And then this is the maximum possible. So for these discrete equations, so mm -hmm. you can use any method and derive some discrete equations. But then I can take the structure of this discrete equations and calculate the maximum possible accuracy. So then for finite elements, the uh, <coughs> set order of accuracy for quadratic elements, it's not optimal. Optimal is 10. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments? If there are no more questions or comments. Let's thank uh, Dr. Yusman again. Thank you very much for the presentation and for being here online. And I hope to see you in the next uh, seminar. Okay, bye bye. Okay, and, then, bye -bye. and again, I would like to mention if you have if you have more questions and would like to just to discuss something with me, collaborate. Just send me a mail and I will schedule a Zoom meeting. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.